Oh, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, first live daily photo show on the YouTubes. So there's going to be no pre-show, no post-show today because we're doing it from the Mevo. And the reason we're doing it from the Mevo is because I am uh, doing this out in the main studio. And the secondary camera that I would be using right now, I loaned to Mr. Sean Mark Nipper. So if you're watching the show, buddy, that's why I'm going live from the Mevo today. But that's okay. It works out perfectly well. So uh, today's show is going to be about teleprompter-ing, tele teleprompter-ing, is that a word? It is now. Um, I wanna show you how I do my teleprompt setup because I set this up for a thing yesterday and I thought, you know, this is actually kinda cool. I should show you guys how this works. So I need to see uh, comments. Where's my, uh, hey, Ryan, could you grab the, uh, no, I can get it. Sorry guys, I'm gonna step out of the scene here just a moment because I realized that I neglected to get my iPad here so I can actually follow along in the comments, say good morning to who's here and all that good stuff. Uh, you love it when your iPad reboots spontaneously and now it tells you that you have to enter your password to get to Touch ID. It's like, really? I don't have time for this now. So how is everybody out there this fine morning? Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you're having a good time. Hopefully I can figure out what my password is. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. It's a long password because I normally have Touch ID enabled. Apparently it's the wrong password. Okay, one more try and then we start to get concerned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nothing more exciting than watching someone enter passwords on a live show. Okay, so um, the setup that I've got here, this is the GH4 because, what the hell's YouTube? Because uh, this was set up for my course about the GH5. So, of course, I'm not using the GH5 in to record the GH5 course because I only have one GH5. And so um, this is GH4 here, and I'm actually using the old... The YAG, the YAG, the Y-A-G-H, the thing that allows you to have XLR inputs, which is now a significantly smaller device and simpler, slightly less capable, but more in other regards, and just a really cool thing to, uh, to have on the GH5. That would be the XLR1. Okay, finally, whew, there, stop babbling, and now I can pull up my comments and actually know where we're at. Here we go, live chat. Oh, look at this, all these people in here. Good morning, Martin Pitt. It says, you don't happen to know of a remote wire that will work with a GH5. You mean a, a, a trigger? I mean, the Panasonic makes one. I don't recall the model number off the top of my head, but they make one, so I would use that. Um, is, if that's not what you mean, please clarify, but I'm assuming that's what you mean. Good afternoon, SRO Digital from Lincolnshire. Excellent, Ninjum, Martin, hello, Jess, John Morby, Rob, Martin, everybody's here, I love it. Password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, that's, don't forget the seven, that's always important. <sighs> it's actually guessed. Thanks, Ryan. You're a big help. Okay. All right. So uh, I will check on this occasionally. I'm not going to have it up on screen, obviously, since we're doing it from the Mevo style. So let's... Uh, nice rig, he says. Thank you very much. I do see comments that fly up on the screen here, but not... I, they go away. So let's take a look at the setup, the hardware setup, and then we'll talk about software. So let me bring this thing in a little bit closer here. So we've got a GH4. Oh, I had another light. Where did that other light go? I guess I have to set this down. This is obviously very well planned. Here we go. Light. There we go. There's the thing. So there's the GH4. That's the YAG. There's two microphones going into this. And this is a very important part of everything that I want to kind of mention here. Let's go a little bit wider on this shot. Um, one of these mics is a boom mic. That's this one here, the red wire. That's going to the road that is over my station where I was doing the show from. And then the second one here is going into the wireless lab or coming from the wireless lab or whatever, whichever the way the data flows. I'm wearing the wireless lab for this. That's not actually what you're hearing me on. You're hearing me on a, on a mic that's on the Mevo. Um, let's see. So that's the audio input into here. Now, this is set up for the recording, obviously doing the recording of the show, of my, my um, course that I did. Wanted to have good audio in there, obviously. So that's what that is all set up for. But then when I went to do the teleprompting thing, the teleprompter software that I'm going to show you actually will listen to you as you talk and scroll as you talk. And it's insanely cool. So that's what we're gonna look at in a moment here. But I wanted you to see how it was set up here first. So the, the next part of this rig is this glass mirror dealio. So the little glass mirror dealio is from a company called Caddy Buddy. Yes, Caddy Buddy. You go to caddybuddy.com. We'll link all this down below as well. It is, I don't remember how much it was, but this is a really inexpensive teleprompting setup. Uh, you use an iPad. You can actually use an iPhone in there even as well. And if I remember right, reading the story of the guy who, when he developed this, the Caddy Buddy website is, it's golf stuff. That's mainly what they do. It's like, I think they have a, a thing to hold your iPhone on your, on your golf 
clubs are. I don't know. Anyway. But at some point, I think in the act of doing the training videos for his products, he needed a teleprompter and couldn't find a good one, so he built one. Go figure. So it's a little odd that you're going to this Caddy Buddy website, but, but that's happening. Why is my Mevo flashing at me? That's just not good. What's going on here? Lost connection to the Mevo, WTF. Okay, am I back? That was not cool. Uh, okay, it says it's streaming. Hopefully I'm back to being live. The Mevo just like spontaneously rebooted. Well, okay, I don't know, hmm, interesting. So hopefully we're back. Anyway, so Caddy Buddy, as far as I know, like I said, he developed it because there wasn't a good solution on the market and this is for your iPad. So it doesn't have the software, the software's totally separate, but it's just this mirror. Um, I think you lose a stop and a half, I wanna say, something like that. You lose a stop and a half of light because obviously it's one of these semi-transparent mirrors, so the, the image has to reflect on the screen so you can see it from across the room or wherever you are, but the camera lens still has to be able to you know, get through it. So that's set up. So this is a nice little inexpensive rig for this. And then comes the software, which is arguably one of the more important parts of this. So the software that I'm using is called Prompt Smart Pro. And obviously I can't, from here I can't do a whole rigging to show you the interface directly, but essentially I'll just kind of do it like this. I mean, exit out of this. You, you can import your text from Dropbox or any number of the shared services, or you can just type it in here if you really wanted to. And then you have things in here like controlling how fast or slow it's gonna be, the size of the font, whether uh, the color of the font, the color of the background, and most importantly for this, the ability to mirror it. Obviously you need to be able to mirror the text if you're gonna use it on a mirrored interface, right? So that you can see the text facing forward. But the coolest thing about this service, this about this app rather, is the voice recognition. So they have this thing called, so when you look at your scroll settings, let's see if, I don't know how well this is gonna work here, but see if you can possibly see this. Looks a little washed out. Nah, that's not gonna work, is it? You have on here, under scroll settings, preset scroll speed, so you can you know, choose, and it tells you how many words per minute you would talk, and you just have to adjust it, and you read through, and you read through, and you test, and test, and test it. And frankly, that sucks, because it means that you, you have to talk at a very consistent speed, and I find that that is very hard for me to work that way. I just, it never really works well when I have it scrolling on its own at a consistent speed. I just don't like working that way. And then there is the manual scroll, which is great if you've got somebody else with you. You can't, I mean, I guess you could kind of like have your hand under the table on a remote kind of scrolling it while you're talking, but that's really distracting and that's not, uh, obviously not a good way to go. But if you have somebody else with you who can handle this, manage the, uh, manually manage the scrolling for you, then that could work. But the coolest thing in here is this thing called voice track. Now they have changed some of their services in here. You, oh no, the voice track is, is included in the pro. They now have a subscription service to add additional features, um, but the voice track is built in. So the way the voice track works is it is listening to you talking little voice recognition and it's scrolling as you go and I've found it to be remarkably good now one of the challenges is it's going to be using the, the microphone on your iOS device on your iPhone or iPad which means if you put this thing far away from you it's not gonna work so well so what I've done here I remember I talked about my audio coming into the YAG the GH5 a GH4 of course and the GH5 obviously have a, a headphone out for monitoring I've taken the line out of that headphone out port it's just a standard, let me set this thing down. Just a simple standard, let's go nice and tight on this. Uh, mini jack, you know, male, male mini jack. And then of course, you gotta have your TRS to TRRS adapter if you're gonna plug anything into your iPad or iPhone. So that's on there. This plugs into the headphone jack. And now the software is listening to my voice through my good microphone, which means that it's gonna hear it very clearly and it's gonna have a much more accurate detection for its whole scrolling, voice tracking, whatever the heck it's doing. Works out remarkably well. Now, the last step in here, and I'm, this is one of the reasons that I decided to do the show today because I don't use this very often. I don't use the, um, I don't use the teleprompter all that often. It's kind of a few times a year, but when I use it, I tend to use it really hard and use it a lot for a period of time. So I fired it up yesterday and I discovered that they added at some point in the last, I don't know, six or nine months or so since I've last used it, they added remote control. Now this was always one of the biggest downfalls of the software because I'd be, say I'm on set and where you normally see me doing my, my show from. And the camera's you know, obviously out there and I'm talking to it. If I wanna redo a line or I flub a line, I need to go back, 
I would have to physically get up out of my chair, walk over to it, scroll the screen back to where it was, sit back down and keep going. Needless to say, that sucks. It's really, really tedious to have to do that back and forth. And if you wanted a remote, wanted a remote. Well, they finally came out with a remote and it connects your, to your iPhone. It's a free partner app. You connect it over Bluetooth and then from your iPhone, you can pause it if you're doing a, a speeded sc uh, time scroll, you can pause it. If you're doing a voice track scroll, uh, it's scrolling for you, but if you need to back up, you have this iPad remote, iPhone remote that you can now back up on it, or there's a button to take you right up to the top. Um, now, I will tell you that the connection is a little funky. Every time you connect, it asks you for permission, and that is really, really annoying. But I talked to the company about it, and they told me they're working on that. There should be a software update coming soon that's going to address that issue. Because it is super tedious that every time you connect it, it asks you, goes through the whole permission thing. Because you walk over to the other side of the room, you hit connect, and then it's popping up a thing on this screen. You're like, oh my god, I forgot. I have to walk back over here, hit OK, and so on and so on. So hopefully that's getting better. They said it is. But at the end of the day, it works. So you now have the ability to remote control your teleprompter script from the other side of the room. Uh, you have, with the addition of an audio, either, whether you're plugging in a microphone or plugging in your actual source audio into this, you have the ability to have the iPad listen to your really good audio so the voice track works really well. So let me, I'll just show you how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. So again, I know you can't really see this screen here, but this is my script. This is for my introduction to the GH5 course. I told you guys yesterday that I, I script these, my intro and outro I script. So that's all set and ready to go. Oops. So, so many in here, so I probably should clear some of these out. What was it called? GH5, G, where's it? Oh, there, now it's, it's sorted chronologically. I was looking for it alphabetically. Okay, I hit play. Okay, while, while, it was, while I was hitting play, I was shushing because it says, be quiet, while it calibrates the voice track. Of course, Ryan was talking then, very convenient. Thank you, buddy. Um, but hopefully it was okay. I, he's far enough away, it probably didn't matter. And put this thing in here. So you can see there, the text is backwards, right? I put this guy into here. Make sure that the iPad doesn't flip its resource, flip its text over. Um, there we go. Okay, so now let's see if you can see this. Can you kind of see, kind of sort of see the text in there? Should work. So now, obviously I'm close because I'm not going to go to the other side of the room, but let's go for the wide shot here again. Scroll to the top. And with any luck, it's gonna work. So let's see, if, can I, can you see that? Maybe, here, let's do this. Let's go for a tight shot on there. You can see the screen and I'm gonna go farther away and talk to it. Of course, now I've got lights shining right on and I can't see anything. Okay, here we go. Hi there, I'm Photo Joseph, a photographic storyteller, educator, a Lumix luminary, and your host for this GH5 training course. When I set out to create this course, I, uh, see, see how that's fun? Do you see how it's scrolling like that? Isn't that cool? It's so awesome, it totally works. It is a remarkable, remarkable thing to be able to talk and have it scroll with you as you go. Now, I've just set my needle on its side, there we go. Um, so that's that, isn't that neat? I, just, I had to show this to you because it works so well and now that they've got the remote, finally I feel like, hallelujah, I gotta sing the praises on this one because it is such, such an awesome app. And again, getting the microphone line set up in there makes it really, really clean, even if you're the other side of the room, which is the way I'm doing this. It, my one wish, wish list thing is that you could make the text even bigger because I'm doing this from so far away that it's a little hard for me to read the text. I actually put it on, put the app on my iPad Pro yesterday because the app is not uh, designed for the Pro, it's only designed for regular iPad, which means it automatically scales up. So everything just got bigger. But the problem is the iPad Pro is a bit too big for this teleprompter rig. So the edges of my text were going off of the mirror and it was a little hard to do. So. I think if I squint, I can do it on this. <laughs> we'll try it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that works out. But yeah, so that's how that works. That's, that's everything. Let me take a look at the comments here. And otherwise, we've got a show. That's basically what I wanted to do. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. Uh, let's see here. Kevin's saying, wasn't today supposed to be about the Inferno? Kevin, my man, that was yesterday. You missed it. Go watch yesterday's show. And <laughs> never lost me. It just, oh, right. So that was weird. The software crashed or the something crashed. I saw a little light spinning on the Mevo, but apparently it didn't lose the signal, so that's good. That is good. <laughs> SRO Digital is lamenting the headphone socket on an Apple product. It's an old iPad. I know. It's so nice to have. <sighs> Kevin's saying, is that the Mevo with the dodgy autofocus? It shouldn't be autofocusing. It should just be a fixed focus, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, Beardy Face says, can you try and see if it works with Dutch? 
<laughs> uh, ik spreek heel klein beetje Nederlands. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, that's like the only Dutch that I know. So there you go. Okay, I guess that's it. We're not going to do a Q&A today because it's this setup and, you know, there's all there is to it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Guys, thank you. Nice, quick, short show. Just wanted to show that off. It is a really neat setup. Uh, obviously, it'll work with any camera you put in there. The, the rigging in here is completely agnostic of the camera. The teleprompting software doesn't care what the camera is, so it doesn't matter where. You could even do this with your iPhone. Stick an iPhone behind here and have another iPhone for your teleprompting and have another iPhone for the remote control, and you could all do it, you know, all iOS-based if you really wanted to. But it's neat. It's a nice setup. It really works, and I just wanted to give a shout-out to all these guys. So Prompt Smart Pro, get the Pro version. I think you have to have the Pro version for the voice track. I'm not sure, but get the Pro version. Pay them. It's worth it. Caddy Buddy for the teleprompter mirror thing, and then uh, obviously whatever camera you're going to stick behind it. Thanks, guys. That's it. I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time.